What's going on, fellas? How y'all doing? Yo, what's up? Great. What's up? Yo, how you doing, man? Good, good. I got a few uh few wise men here. Some good Uh-oh. friends. <laughs> good friends from uh, a few years. <laughs> and uh known each of you for, for a while now. Just mm-hmm. wanna jump on here and check in with you guys, see how you're doing during this time of quarantine, social distancing and all of that. Uh but we'll start with my left. Mr. Detroit is back. CST, how you doing, sir? Oh, what's up? Yo, I didn't even know you knew about that, bro. That's crazy. <laughs> we'll get you into did, that. You, you did your research. <laughs> oh, no, nah, no. Nah. We go back a couple years, man. It's good to see you. Oh, yeah, most deaf, man. What's up? And how about the uh, other gentleman to the left? Mr. Progress, how you doing, sir? I'm doing great, man. God is good. Life is good. You know, things are a little hectic out there, but I'm just happy to be here and Share this time with you guys, man. It's good to see y'all. For sure, for sure. And on the right side, bottom right side, Mr. Big Uh-oh. C. How you doing, sir? Oh, man, I'm doing good. I'm just quarantined with the the greatest woman I could have been quarantined with. So I'm <laughs> I'm happy. My life is good. <laughs> it's you got the good. queen. Quarantine okay. with the I queen. I got the queen B, bro. So I'm straight. <laughs> sure. Well, it's good to see you guys, man. We're going to have a quick conversation, man. Just catch up. Get to see how you guys have been doing. And uh, just first off, how you guys doing with the quarantine, Big? Just just out there, and, and you're still in South Carolina, correct? Yeah, I am. Um, and, um, you know, yeah. I mean, here in South Carolina, um, it's a little more lax than it is across the country, which is nerve-wracking for me. So, you know, I keep my mask on and, and you know, things of that nature. But, you know, because I have the uh, the gyms that I run, um, you know, they still, you got to still pay the bill. So, mm-hmm. um, because things are lax the way they are, um, we are allowed to do certain things. So I'm able to keep my gyms running and things of that nature. And, and I'm an essential worker because I work at the radio station. So I have to go into work, you know, five days a week, um, to do my show. And on top of that, because I, I'm, uh, I work in the school system. Uh, the blessed thing about it is they pay all the teachers, whether you're there or not. So it, it's been kind of good for us because, you know, my wife and my daughter, you know, we all work for the school system. So we still uh, receive our school system, our, our county uh, pay. So it's kind of been a blessing for us here. For sure. Now, give us a brief introduction, too. If we can kind of go through and and as we discuss this, just kind of give us a brief introduction. What it is that you do? I know we all met through music, right? So we have that. That history, Mm -hmm. a lot of us, all of us have songs together, so uh, we can get to that too. But just kind of briefly introduce yourself, Big, and we'll go around and uh, just tell us who you are, where you're from. Uh, You know, it's Ron Goodwin, uh, Big City. I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Um, On top of the the music thing that we were able to do, I uh, I run two uh, gyms. One is a football um, gym, indoor facility, has turf inside called the Bigs. It means bringing instruction giving guidance through sports and then I have a basketball a gym as well where we have a basketball and volleyball in there I have a, a two a pro team in there a d3 team in there my own youth uh, football uh, program in there a basketball team in there and uh, I run upstate elite youth sports which we take care of kids I have about 150 kids and we work with local high schools on top of that I'm a football coach at St. Joe's uh, High School. So that's me. There you go. Busy man. Busy man. It was good Good to see you doing well. How about you, Mr. Yeah, Progress? How are things out there in, in Northern Virginia? And just give us a quick introduction on who you are, what it is that you do. Sure, sure. Uh, Reggie Holmes, uh, a.k.a. Progress. Um, uh, coming out of Richmond, Virginia. That's where I'm from. Um, I live up in Northern Virginia, near D.C. right now. So, um, you know, it's... it's uh, it's kind of locked down over here. Uh, you know, so I live in a densely populated area, so um, things are, you know, central businesses and stuff are open, but a lot of places aren't open. Um, you know, you got to try to find time to get out of the house, man. Honestly, that's that's like the hardest thing is just feeling confined to uh, to being in the house. But, um, you know, I work from home. I'm, I'm blessed to have my own business. Uh, I do branding and design, uh, creative work for, for businesses and organizations. So, um, you know, fortunately, things are, are still moving with that. You know, people need to have their websites, they need to have their social media. So, uh, so I'm blessed to still have those opportunities. But um, yeah, man, you know, we're just trying to keep it moving. 
stay safe out here. So. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure, man. Yep. Well, how about you, CST? Terry, how you doing out there in uh, Kentucky? Yo, um, it is good, man. Um, it, it, it's interesting because um, it is uh, Kentucky is a mixed bag. So uh, I'm in real estate, so I'm allowed to uh, operate as an essential worker. So that's encouraging. Um, the other piece is that a lot of the other industries are not. So it's a little bit of a mixed bag. So I'm actually out every day. So I do real estate. I also flip property and I also kind of own the, an equity company that does, you know, real estate and other types of products in that realm of real estate. So, um, so yeah, so we're out working. So literally I was just at work five minutes ago. We're literally still working and it, it is kind of crazy because there's a lot more legalities around what we do. So, mm -hmm. you know, so that's the, you know, it's like the health crisis is one scary part, but then mm -hmm. it's the legalities behind what you do, which is e right. equally as just as scary because, you know, you don't want to be out with a client and they say they caught COVID-19 because they were out with you. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. so, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So there's a little bit of that that's equally as scary because you're just like, okay, man, you know, you can, you know, you can't prove it, but do you want to spend the money fighting it? So, right. but yeah, but um, Kentucky is, is good. Um, you, you know, the family is good. We're, uh, you know, um, yeah, it's pretty cool, man. Good to hear, man. So brief introduction. Um, you said you did some real estate. You, you're kind of in that market right now. Um, but back when, back in, in a couple of years ago, um, you are a well-known uh, spitter, as they say, right? That's right. Hey, man. I, hey man I, <laughs> well known. Well known. I, I bust a couple raps. <laughs> Got you. Yeah. yeah. I bust a couple <laughs> raps in my day. <laughs> for sure, for and, sure. And, so and, and, and like doing it, you know. For sure. Well, like let, let's it. let's talk about that real quick. Just kind of give us a little bit of in uh, insight on you and when it is when it was, I should say, that you fell in love with music. Um, you know, was it a young age? Where were you? Kind of give us a quick little rendition of that. Hey, I started rapping when I was nine years old. I heard a track called Rapping Duke, Da Ha Da Ha. <laughs> I heard that track in 1983 mm -hmm. and wow. just was like, and that was, and, and I was in front of an elementary school in Detroit and a few friends of ours just was started rapping in that cadence. Right. So I, all of yeah. nine years old and they were rapping in that cadence and then we would just say the raps. And then I was, then we started going over, I went over this dude's house. I even remember his name. Like I just remember everything about that er <laughs> that first time uh, of just being like, okay, well, let's go say, let's, you know, I walked over his house and we started writing raps yeah. and, you know, we didn't know what we were doing, but we were just trying to write some raps. And, uh, and so then from there, like literally about maybe five years later, I, I um, you know, kind of was in high school and I hooked up with this producer that mm -hmm. did some that did beats so i would go over his house literally just started rapping and um and, and then we started doing we started doing records and we put out a we put out a we put out a we put out a little song called detroit is back mm -hmm. next thing you know i'm in the source magazine i had no idea wow. like it was before it was before it became the bible <laughs> you know of rap at the time you know so 91 ish you know, you're in the source. I'm like, yo, this is still dope to me, you know? Yeah, so I would yeah, carry yeah. that magazine with me, be like, yo, what's up? You know, I'm in it, you know? I wish I can find it today. But um, mm -hmm. but yeah, just to see that and then kind of grow from there. And um, it, and it's been a interesting, to be rapping for 30 years is, you never think people would even say that. Yeah. They've been rapping mm -hmm. for 30 years. Like, I don't even know, like people were like, they rapping <laughs> for 30 years. Like that's, that was unheard of when I was coming up. And so yeah. now, you know, you got rappers, you know, you, you got rappers still out here doing it, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah, man, it, it, it's been a fun ride, man. It's been a fun ride. Collided with all of you guys. And, you know, mm -hmm. we kind of did some cool things together, did some yeah. tours. So I, I was super blessed to be a mm. part of that and mm -hmm. to kind of, for all of us to work together. So I, I thought that was pretty dope, you know? Yeah, for sure. So for you, it's definitely a young age. 
And it was Detroit, right? You said Detroit. Oh, yeah, Detroit. Detroit. Yeah, 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 Detroit. I can see the hat, so, you know. Oh, well, I rep. <laughs> Still, I rep, bro. Cool, man. Well, appreciate uh, you sharing that, man. How, how about you, Big? What was your start with music? When did it start Ooh, and man. where were you? Um, I was 13. Uh, I just started just doing poetry. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, how the, that's how it happens for me. Um, just following after my brother, and he was doing music. And so I just started writing poetry. And then um, it really wasn't until, uh, I want to say 1999, um, 2000, where when I um, became uh, a disciple, um, I linked up with a, a brother up in Groton, Connecticut. And we formed a group called the Young Lions. And we would do, um, we did a couple songs there. And we toured up in Hartford and things of that nature. And then when I moved to Philadelphia, I linked up with Mark Mattier. And, uh, and then we did 13th Disciple. And we started doing some music there. And then in 2005, I just, you know, I remember laying on the floor. God is my witness. I was laying on the floor. Because I was like, man, I, you know, the group broke up and I was like, can I go solo? And I was on my, laying on my stomach, <laughs> talking to myself. I mean, I was, I was not verbalizing, yeah. and I, but I was praying. And I was I, in my prayers, I was like, Lord, I, you know, can I do this myself? Like, can I go solo? You know, I'm nervous about it. And I, again, I'm just not verbalizing this. And here comes Anissa. You know, my my first grader, yeah. she comes down the stairs and says, Daddy, I can read big words now. I'm like, you can? And she had the Bible in her hand, and she opened the Bible and said, and read, with men, things are impossible. With God, all things are possible, and then went upstairs. <laughs> so then I was like, so as I'm praying this, she comes downstairs and says this to me, and then I was like, okay, it's on. So then I linked up with Art Henson, and then we started doing it, and it's just so it snowballed, and then we did Christ All I Need, and then obviously I linked up with you because you was a seventeen year old teen at the time, and you know we were just doing, we just did so, and it just snowballed, and and just got bigger and bigger and bigger, and and what it showed me is that God can take anybody in any state. He can your hundred, my hundred percent may not be. A uh, Reg hundred percent or or Terry's hundred percent, but it was good enough for God. Yeah, and that's what He showed me. Like I can take what if you give me your best, I could take that best and and make it huge. Yeah, because I never felt like I was the best at my gift, but the gift was good enough. God, you know, every good and perfect gift comes from above, comes down from the Father of Lights, who does not change, like shift and shadows. That's James one seventeen. So my gift was perfect. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm going to give it to God and just say, I'm just going to use it. And he has taken it and just done some amazing things with it. Wow. That's amazing. No matter what they say, right? That's right. No matter what they <laughs> say, you got that right. <laughs> no, because I went back and saw that video, man. What was that, 05 when you did that video? Something like that? That was 05. That was your first solo? Yeah, it was 05. Yeah. Incredible, man. Mm -hmm. we're, looking yep. young, we're looking young in that video. Um. How about Boy, you, Reggie? Real young. <laughs> How about you, Reggie? When was your first? It was 83, right? For you, Reggie? That's, yeah, that's when I was born. Uh, <laughs> I would say uh, probably. Um, probably no, because me, me and Reggie from that, from that, from that yeah. year. That's why I say that. You know? Class of 83. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I've been rapping as long as y'all been alive. Is that what this is? Um, is that what you, you brought me on this? You brought me on your no. podcast, bro, to be like, yo. <laughs> no. no, no, not at all. Uh, it's all love. Um, yeah, I would say probably uh, probably 96. Um, I, I was on a field trip, and um, a friend of mine, he bought a uh, Nas I Am uh, mm -hmm. CD. Yeah. And uh, yeah. we were listening to that on the, on the way back uh, on a field trip. And um, that was the first time that I, I could see myself, like, rapping, you know. Um, I think I, I used to mess around, uh, but I was sort of – I was, like, the smart kid. so. Um, I couldn't just go around rapping really because nobody would sort of want to hear that coming from me. But um, I, I felt like it was in there, you know what I mean? And, and But that was the first time I felt empowered to like 
you know, speak my truth or whatever, or just start writing stuff. And then um, I lived next door to these twins and uh, they were into music as well. And so, you know, every day after school, I would just go to their house and, you know, we would, we would, they had, they had vinyl, you know, so we would go, uh, they would put on records and we would just record stuff, you know, and um, it was cool. Like that was sort of, we were like a group, you know, we called ourselves the wild cards. Um, so I was the, the, the ace back then, yeah. that was, you know, uh, yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, that's kind of where it started, you know, and, and then all throughout high school and um, in college, uh, you know, I went down in Miami and, mm-hmm. um, you know, we had this hip hop club, it was a student organization and, and I was like, uh, the only the only organization I joined when I got there, and wow. um, you know, in that group we had we had other rappers, we had producers. So, um, you know, from there, man, I just just kept meeting people. Guys kept sending people that you know helped me make music, and you know, just get out the different things that I was feeling and and, and thinking. So, mm-hmm. um, and it's it's been like that, you know, ever since. Just connecting with the right people at the right times, and um, you know, it's it's been a journey. So, yeah. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Definitely, man. Um, so we kind of talk about, you know, the love of music where it started, but you know, as we progress, right, Terry, we get, we get, uh, we have careers now. We, we know we, we real estate or whether it's the, you know, the business that Reggie has or the business that big has or the things that I'm doing, um, you know, what keeps you inspired, whether it's music or just in general, what continues to keep you inspired? Uh, so it, it's pretty cool to be able to see that, you know, one of the, one of the ministers that I'm close to says, it's not what you teach. It's not what's taught. It's what's caught. Hmm. And what inspires me, man, is the, is the desire to set that example. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To set the, to set an example for future generations or people around me so that people can look at people like me and see that they can come from where I'm, where I've been and mm-hmm. actually be somebody. And so that's the encouraging thing that inspires me. Um, you know, that's one of the things that I'm looking at right now. Cause when you see, when you see people are looking at you, you're like, you know, I better move it. You know, it keeps you, it's one of the motivations that keeps me moving in a certain way. Yeah. Um, you know, that, the grace of God is a, is a bigger motivation for me. Um, you know, just seeing that he's moving even in crisis like this, Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And, um, it's interesting because I I heard Lecrae say this, he says, you know, when you're close to somebody and you take them to the movies, like you, you kick it with a girl back in the day, you take them to the movies and you take them to a scary movie. And when there's a jump scare, they kind of jump closer to you. He yeah. says, it's a, it's a crazy analogy, but he was like, he, he kind of feels like that's how God is doing us right now. Yeah. Like, it's a really scary movie, and we're kind of cozying up to God a little bit more. Right mm-hmm. So right. I, I just thought, man, how appropriate is that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just to kind of see how to, you know, how to keep myself motivated, how to keep myself focused. Mm-hmm. And that's been a challenge because it is death all around. I mean, I'm losing you know, I lost family members, my friends lost family members, my, you know, it's crazy where I'm, you know, um, where I'm from. And so, you know, just hearing those stories is definitely bring you down from time to time. So you just have to stay focused and, and positive and you, and you need to be able to have something to share with people because it is tough right now for a lot of people. Yeah, for sure. No, you're right. I mean, it's, it ties into just life in general. It sounds like, you know, I mean, we go through tough times and especially now, you know, I mean, we, who would have thought 2020 would be, you know, basically on house arrest, <laughs> you know, like Dang we're stuck it. in the house. We can't go anywhere for, for good reasons. Um, but what about you, Big? Kind of what is it that is kind of getting you through this time currently? If you just want to talk about right now, um, many people can't work or are, are, are uh, unable to get to the job or not, not allowed to go to work. Um, you know, what's getting you through this, this time right now? Wow. Um, let's see. Well, what's getting me through, uh, this time right now? Um, there is a lot of parents who, um, I've been able to get in contact and, and be close to their kids. 
Mm-hmm. So what's getting me through is these kids are are crying out, hey, can you call big? Can you call big? Can you call big? You know? So mm-hmm. parents are calling me saying, hey, my son's unhappy or this is going on. And they have their own fathers. They live very well. Some of them don't. Some of them have fathers who are in prison and things of that nature. But they're still wanting to have some communication with me, which keeps me going because I feel like I have to be strong. I have to be um, cognizant of where we are in the climate, like like Terry's saying, but also preaching Christ still. Also, you know, pouring positivity in them. And then on top of that, they still want to, you know, train. So, you know, we keep our numbers low as well, but it's a time where I can sit them down in the middle and talk to them about life choices. So I kind of, I, I like have not really stopped. Um, I took a couple weeks off, um, just making sure things are together, but just, you know, just knowing that there's people out there that still, uh, need help. My boys, uh, kind of still need that help and that guidance and those positive words to get them through school. Mm-hmm. I can, you know, it's one, one, one of my kids, his dad, uh, guy, you know, is a trucker and was in a trucking accident and he passed. So wow. he calls me and I'm like, Hey, look, we got a hundred pushups today man so we gotta do 10 sets of 10 let me know what number you on so we are you know we go back and forth and then you know he showed up at the gym and we worked out together and and all of that but it was time for me to be able to pour into his life so it's been like that for me and it's kind of get me going yeah for sure i mean there's still work to be done in a sense i mean you're kind of getting at that absolutely it's a crazy time a lot of people have to be stuck in the house but you know, mm-hmm. I do think about the kids, you know, I mean, people that, you know, live in tough environments and now they're confined to those environments. Um, but there's still work to be done, you know, for, for us as Christians and as men. So I definitely appreciate that insight. Um, but what about you, Reggie? Like what mm-hmm. kind of transition into the topic a little bit towards, you know, the music and then career? I know, um, you know, you have your company now. And, and by the way, what's the name of the company again? Uh, it's called Enthuse Creative. Okay. So, yeah. Cool. Just want to put yeah. that out there. Put the plug yeah, out there. Yeah. Um, so as far as that, that kind of, as we grow older, we, we still have that love for music. Mm-hmm. Maybe you want to touch on that just briefly about just your transition. I mean, the, the love of music never goes away, right? Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. but what, what allows you to still kind of dibble and dabble or, you know, that balance is if I could say. Sure. Um, so I always, always thought of myself as, uh, you know, like the music career, however long that was, or, or you know, however, however that sort of transpired, I always thought of myself as, as like, like an athlete, you know, like you have, you have some peak years where you're, you know, you're sort of doing what you do in that space at a high level, and you got a lot of energy, and, and you know, everything is just sort of in place for you to really go as far as you can go with that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, I always saw myself at a time where, I would go sort of from being a, a, a athlete or a player to like a coach, you know what I mean? And and yeah. so now I, I don't look for as many opportunities to like do my own albums, stuff like that. You know, I put out three albums and mixtape and, you know, God, God blessed all of that. And, and that music's still there. Um, but, you know, I really look for opportunities to help put other people on. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if if I see that they have some some creative drive or, you know, something that they're, they're really skilled and blessed at, you know, how can I help them? get from one opportunity to the next opportunity you know what i mean like yeah. uh I, I don't necessarily see myself like hey i'm putting out albums and stuff like i used to um but i'm i'm good with that you know what i mean because I, I i see myself now in a, in a position where i'm able to you know i've acquired certain knowledge and skills and stuff and i can i can help other people reach their dreams you know For um sure. get out whatever it is that god put in them you know and, and um just kind of on the last thing that we were talking about like uh, there's a great scripture that talks about how we're we're God's handiwork, you know, like mm-hmm. God's masterpiece, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and that word, you know, it, it it literally is like poema, you know, like we're God's long form poem, His masterpiece, you know, like the Odyssey that He He has created, and and um, it says that we're created to do good works, you know. So I feel like the form of the art maybe has has changed over time, right? Like it's mm-hmm. It's something different, but mm-hmm. it all comes from the same place. It's like, hey, God put this in me to be able to do good works and, and bless other people. And so, you know, I feel like if you're creative, 
you always looking for ways to to do that, you know. So yeah. that's just kind of where you know where you're at in life. Like the the actual form of it may take you know different shapes and stuff, but uh, ultimately we all just trying to like get out what God put in us for the betterment of other people, you know. So we yeah. still still trying to keep that moving. For sure, yeah, and and, and it's it's also I think. Um, you know, the transition as you grow, you just kind of learn to adapt and to do things, still be creative, but find other ways. Yeah. And uh, it sounds like we all are doing that. Yeah. Um, but I want to go back a little bit. I know we got a little bit of short, short more time left, but um, just jump back a bit to the time when we all kind of came together under an umbrella to really put mm-hmm. music out, to inspire each other, to be inspired, collaborate. Um, so we'll start with big on this one, but I just remember when the Flamestone crew got together, uh, <laughs> how much, how much inspiration <laughs> I got. And I think at that point I just started taking mm. off. Like I just wanted to put out so much content and I feel like that was a, oh, a shift for me, but just kind of share briefly real quick, maybe a, a quick minute of, of that time big and just what, what made you start that at that point? Um, I felt like there was no one this what got me. They asked me to do um, um, a conference. And I said, well, do you know this guy and that guy and this mm-hmm. guy? Well, they were like, well, I know of them, but you know, we know you. We know what you do. So it made me say, well, they, they had never really given the brothers outside of me a, a, a chance. And, and I felt like I wanted you guys to experience being at the conferences and letting people see, you know, I felt like it was unfair for me to kind of be the one that people look to and not try to give that to everybody else. You know, our, our culture, you know, hip hop is kind of like a selfish, you know, sport, sport, if you will. It's like, it's me, me, me. It's like, you know, my say it ain't so, (laughs) No, it's just kind of true, you know? So, I said, well, this is an opportunity to put all of dudes on the stage and to see all of those people out there and looking on a jumbotron and seeing, you know, bronze on a jumbotron and Taylor and all of them. I mean, you know, just being at the table and people buying everybody's music and not just one person's music, it just did good for me. So that's kind of why I did it because I wanted y'all guys to experience the joy in you know, the joy that I felt being invited to these conferences and stuff. Until this day, I just did a, a conference in um, Boston in December. I mean, yeah. it's seven years in a row. They've had me out there and, you know, they, they, they you know, they, they take care of it, you know, all the expenses and everything. But it's like, I wanted y'all guys to experience that. And that's why I did it. Wow, that's amazing. And I think uh, you're right. It's a very selfish sport, right, when it comes to hip hop, you know, and it's all about the the individual. But as Christians, we kind of flip that upside down a bit. And for you to take that charge and just to say, I'm bringing my boys and my people with me, um, was just amazing. And you brought us from all over the place. I mean, because you've been different places. And, uh, you know, I just want to thank you for that time. I don't know if anybody has. I know we all have. But I mean, just kind of put it out there and really thank you for what you did there. Uh, Cause I would have never met a Terry CST uh, if it wasn't for that or Taylor mm-hmm. or, or even uh, Ray speak more, you know, like these different guys all over the country, yeah. all disciples, like nobody's, Graf, yeah. you know? So uh, yeah, mm-hmm. grab shout out to him and, and everybody. I mean, wish we, we wish we could have them all at, at once right here, but, um, but, yes. uh, but you know, what, what, we, we just appreciate that. But I think it was a, it was definitely needed. And I think each of us kind of grew from that point. I could see, a growth from that point. So real quick, Terry, if you can give us just a quick one minute, uh, what's your favorite moment from that kind of time when we all were together doing music together and inspiring each other and all of that? So one of my, I had a couple of favorite moments, but we did a conference down in San Antonio. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and it's kind of wild because I'm trying to remember I don't quite remember the entire collective, but I think that might have been the only time the entire collective, or at least eighty to ninety percent of the collective, was together. Yeah, in one place, Anadol in one city. There. Yeah, and Anadol missed yeah. it for whatever to, reason. My grandmother, yeah, he yeah. missed. Oh, the dig it, dig yeah. it. So you know, so he missed that. Yeah. But I think the entire collective was together, and yeah. it was crazy because. Mm-hmm. You had 
different brothers performing different things mm -hmm. was doing different things like literally you know we all go support whoever was rocking out that night yeah and to think that we were all mm -hmm. busy and actually doing it all together I i'm yeah. definitely grateful for that because i felt like that conference was just like it showed everybody and then we had the booth i wish we had pictures that we can throw up i don't know if you're going to edit this in or what what are you going to do but yeah. Man, we got that picture of all of us at the booth. Yeah. And I just thought that was crazy. Yes. And it showed up on my Facebook timeline, yes. which was wild. Like, <laughs> I was like, oh, snap. You know mm. what I'm saying? Scout. You know what I mean? It was just crazy. Yes. It, 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 you know, <laughs> just to see everybody together mm. doing their thing. And, um, yeah. you know, and, and brothers, like, in you know, we all had our little hotels. I mean, we scraped up our pennies to get there. It was just crazy. But God bless that. Yeah, and it sure. was so i'm yeah, definitely yeah. grateful man for i feel like we kind of did a you know a, a, a church you know um we kind of did a a version of, and not to use these terms lightly but a version of wu-tang or cross movement or yeah. something like a collective of people that were able to do something really incredible so i'm yeah. definitely grateful to big for that too man so yeah, you know, yeah for sure i mean it's funny because that that time when you guys went i wasn't able to go but my face was on the banner and when you guys yeah. put the up, like people yeah. found out who I was just from my face being yeah. on the banner, and that was crazy. Um, but I know mm -hmm. that was a great time. But um, but I definitely appreciate you guys. I know we are kind of crunched on time here, but I definitely appreciate you guys joining in here. And uh, you know, let's let's continue to to be inspired, to stay inspired. And again, as Big said, there's a lot of work that still can be done at this time. So I hope everybody that's watching this gets inspired. We'll put all the descriptions of where you can find each of these guys. Please follow them, see what they're doing, what they have done. YouTube is a great tool. We can go back in time and see where we were. Mm -hmm. Me and Progress have a lot of stuff out there together, a lot of tracks. as well as the other brothers. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. we go back to 1990 and see that Detroit is back, you know, and uh, it's just incredible to see you brothers. But thank you again for being on here. Stay inspired and stay safe. And we look forward to seeing you guys again soon. Yeah. Thanks for having us, man. Peace. Yeah, Peace. yeah Peace. this is good. Peace. Much love, yeah. guys. Oh, Peace. yeah, most deaf, most deaf. Good seeing you, gentlemen. Yep.